I genuinely think that so much of the team has turned over that it's not even the same people anymore that made those promises. So they never even intentionally did rug pull. So the way I think of this is Aaron has been making really good decisions for the game. Um, I think when he made the decision to go back towards PVP, it was the correct one that should have been made three plus years ago. There's a lot of things that have come since then, you know, whether it's uh, gameplay wise, like focusing on, on supporting the PVP game, like, you know, whether it's introducing new game modes, introducing new characters, like all of these things, like things that actually support it. Well done. But you also can't overlook that there's a very real possibility that the reason there's been so much turnover is because the people who originally made all the promises were forced out or weren't able to actually maintain them because they weren't supported by the up top corporate level. We've seen people leave recently. I've seen a lot of people leave recently. So like the turnover is crazy. Also, there was things from Overwatch 1, like systems they talked about they had to rebuild. Part of that you almost wonder, because I remember years ago, um, people asked like, hey, can we get like legacy uh, patch game modes? Like, for example, like we all go play goats for a month, right? Like it's an arcade game mode where you go play goats. And they couldn't do that because they didn't have the data for like what those patches were. And people from the workshop can go make it. Like all you gotta do is go dig through the forums and go find like old patch notes and put it together yourself. But they don't have all of that, which is makes it funny to me, you know, and then you look at things like that, the recently like the ash bug that got fixed and then reverted, you know, like about Bob doing damage or getting alt charge and not getting alt charge. It's legitimately such a different team that they don't, they don't even know about these, these promises that were made or existed or even these systems that might have even existed in the past. So part of me wants to give them a pass, you know, and like not think it was in, like they weren't intentionally trying to rug pull and at least not the current team. Um, Cause I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of people that are there now and they do genuinely try to listen. Not saying all the time it happens, but like, you know, they do make a good effort and I do appreciate that. But at the same time, though, it's another, it's a billion dollar corporation that very much wants to, to, they want to make all the money off of us that they can. And I think you're right. PVE isn't the focus anymore. And I think that's a major mistake. I think that it had the potential to double its player base almost overnight because you wouldn't just have all these PVPs tryhards. You would also have the PVE enjoyers that just want to like, you know, they want to just, they want to enjoy Overwatch. And I genuinely believe I am one of these people nowadays where I don't like Overwatch anymore. I like the idea of Overwatch, what Overwatch is as a universe, as a community, what, like what, what happens with news balance, like everything that encompasses Overwatch. I love, but actually playing the fucking game sucks balls. Like it's ass. I don't know what it is, but like, it is just awful nowadays. And I wonder how many people are kind of like that and do love Overwatch that don't play it anymore because they've already went to go to another game that actually made them feel wanted slash actually was supporting their game for the last few years. It could have expanded this to so many more people and myself and others, I think really looked forward to that. But like you said, there isn't a way to monetize it. There isn't really a good way to make money off of it, like long term. I think they seriously hit a point in development where the investors came, they came knocking and were like, hey, you've been working on this for three or four years. We need something. Like you gotta, it's time to like time to show up. And they didn't really have anything. And they were like, okay, well, if we give you more time, like how do you plan to make money with this? And they're like, uh, well, we, we sell it as a box. And it's like, yeah, but like the live service games notoriously make way more money. Like the, like you said before, the price point of the game isn't even like the big point anymore. It's like the microtransactions on the back end that really are the, the heavy hitters at farm. And because they already have it, how are they gonna monetize it? Like in a perfect world for both Blizzard and as a player, how do you monetize PVE? For a player, it's very easy, you make it free. Boom. But on the Blizzard end, th this is their best possible outcome. Like the only thing that they could do that wouldn't just sink it is releasing it all at once. Like if they released it all at once at like a $60 price point, people would probably go bananas. Like what you want, like a campaign for 60 bucks, like fuck off. But instead they release it in these very small bunches. They bring it out over time to make you buy the battle pass because buying the battle pass. Well, now when you bought the battle pass, you're like, well, I bought the battle pass. I might as well complete it so I can get all the cosmetics. And then you keep playing throughout the, the weeklies and the, and the dailies and working up your battle pass to finally get to the end of it. As they release more cosmetics throughout the season and more opportunities and more tempted ways to buy because the cosmetics are so fucking good, you're gonna open up the shop one day and you're gonna go, man, that Reinhardt skin looks real fucking good. Oh man. But the only way you see that is if you actually go into the game and play it. 
and the only way you're going to play the game is if the, unless you actually are really committed and you're a hardcore player and you actually like it all the time, is you have to have a connection to it. And the only way to have a connection to it is, well, in their eyes here, either a hero release, which is notoriously the biggest way that players come back, or what they're probably thinking is the PvE content. They release drops of PvE with missions to get you to come back and play it, and then get you to buy the battle pass, so then you play for the rest of the season, try to get you to do a, more, a couple more cosmetics along the way, and then they just re-up that two, three, four times for the next few months, and they've built out a method where they not only capitalize on you paying for PvE, but also hopefully tempt you into, well, now you'll buy the battle cap pass because you're already here, and you're getting XP for playing the campaign missions, right? They, they mentioned that. You get battle pass XP for playing the campaign missions, so you might as well buy the battle pass while you play the campaign missions and get more stuff. And then once you finish all that stuff, you might as well finish the battle pass and do your dailies and weeklies. And while you're doing your dailies and weeklies, the shop items are coming up and it's like, well, more opportunities to spend more money. So it's just, it's tiring at this point. It's so tiring. There is no world where PvE would have been a good monetization model. So I think they just kind of were like, well, we're never going to be able to make it in time. It would require way more dev resources than we're willing to, to make. And so, like you said, they changed the way the wording was for it. And in, instead of being a WoW expansion, PvE, Overwatch style thing, it's now a campaign. But they kept the wording for PvE because that's what they had always called it. But I agree with you. It is not PvE. It is the Overwatch 2 campaign.